currently the president-elect of Friendship City Projects. And here with me today is Philip Wegner and also Mercedes Alvarez, who are part of the Friendship City Projects. And we have scheduled, right after me, giving a little presentation about Jalapa and what we have been, uh, our work we have been doing there to have our um, other invited speaker, Travis Ramos, who has been our volunteer for the past three years and now um, kind of jump started his or kick started his own NGO, uh, partially in, initiated by his interest in our work there. And so he will talk about that right after me. So, um, Today I will be talking about Jalapa, Nicaragua. Jalapa is um, a, uh, a small a town of 60,000 people in the northern part of Nicaragua, wedged between borders, uh, bordering, uh, like, a, yeah, wedged between the border of Honduras. And um, it is a very, very rural area that, um, Basically, the United States and um, and Nicaragua have been impacting that area for, I would say, more than a century. Um, a little bit about Nicaragua history: um, it was first settled by the Spanish in 1522, beca became independent in 1838. But from 1909 until 1933, Nicaragua was occupied by um, US Marines because they sort of supported the uh, conservative government and US interests in Nicaragua, trying to avoid for a competitive canal to be built through Nicaragua rather than Panama. And uh, then uh, the Marines were pushed out of Nicaragua in 1933, in 1933 after the re revolution or the rebels of, uh, of Sandino um, finally succeeded of pushing um, the occupation, uh, occupants out. Um, however, uh, Samosa and, uh, ruled Nicaragua and it, these were military rulers that really uh, were aligned with uh, the United States interests and they uh, took, a, um, they basically uh, allowed for the natural resources to be robbed within Nicaragua and they just filled their own pockets. In 1979, the Sand Sandinista revolution finally triumphed um, and uh, they uh, stayed in, in power for uh, nearly, um, like, uh, Mercedes? 10 years. And then after a general election, um, the government con uh, converted again to a conservative government. In 1981, the Reagan administration uh, basically suspended all US aid and uh, placed an embargo on Nicaragua. A little bit more about economic development. I'm not gonna go into great detail about this, but 
simply just tackling deforestation from 1945 to 1960, um, a US-owned logging company directly paid the Samosa government and uh, millions of dollars to sub, uh, take lumber out of Nicaragua. Um, in addition to that, uh, in 1961, um, there were hardly, um, I mean, all the pines were cut. Um, the ex expansion of cotton plantations in the 50s and then cattle ranches in the 60s really boomed, of course, because of US interests. And in the 1970s, actually, Nicaragua became the United States' top beef supplier, supporting fast food chains and pet food production. But again, 1981, the embargo, all of a sudden, they had been the biggest supplier. All their export was gone. So to keep that in mind. Um, the other big economic or impact of the big... Uh, uh, economic development was the Contra War during the 1980s. Um, partially as part of the embargo, um, the, United Milita the US military sent missionaries down to Honduras and Nicaragua to train people that would fight Sandinistas. And um, basically, uh, war ensued for more than a decade um, and Jalapa was actually the center of the fire zone because it is right, it's the one city that is wedged between the Honduran border and the US military had been told that they would get more funding if they can take one city in the northern part of Nicaragua. And um, so, but they never actually succeeded to taking over that one little city. So people really fought back. However, you see residues until now where here, for example, this fence is actually all barbed wire. Any fencing you will see in Nicaragua is barbed wire. You feel like you're still in a war zone coming from the United States because it's something for us very unusual to see barbed wire everywhere. Um, these are, uh, Jalapa, Nicaragua is actually um, uh, a valley, Jalapa Valley, similar to Boulder Valley. So uh, of the 133 uh, districts within Jalapa Valley, uh, 113 are rural and only about 20 are urban. You can see here how the urban area is spread and some pictures of what Jalapa downtown looks like. Cameron just came to visit. He went there um, as a volunteer for us as well. Hi, Cameron, thanks for coming. Um, and it's a lot of dirt streets, mostly, and there's one of the two paved roads of the town. In the rural areas, homes are spread quite a bit, and as you can see, the landscape is very similar to Boulder, because you have the mountain range, um, and then uh, also li like one city and smaller communities. Um, here in some of these slides you can perhaps notice uh, that there are farms in the mountains and also that the mountains are quite uh, deplete of pine, of, of the pines. But that's not only due to the lumbering, but also because of the pine beetles. They are dealing with a similar issue as we are here because um, of the climate change. And so a lot of the pines die there. The only way of, to get to Jalapa is the Pan American Highway. This would look like one of the Boulder side streets. It is basic, this is the width of one of our regular streets but divided as a highway. Here you see um, some members of the uh, Women's Foundation walking to one of the meetings because, yeah, there are buses, but if you don't want to wait for the bus, you walk. And um, so this is the hi a highway that was built about five years ago by the um, uh, US, no, no, the, the, the uh, World Monetary Fund. It was sponsored, so. 
um, housing. Most of the homes are just shift, make, barracks, and shacks. Um, built out of wood, metal, plastic tarps, and then for more permanent homes and for the better established people, out of adobe. The adobe is um, local there and people actually do the do adobe bricks themselves and some of the homes stay unfinished like this one and others then are finished with some cement cover. Water is abundant in the area. There are a lot of rivers, a lot of water so sources. However, look at this picture. Children and mothers are the ones that are responsible for bringing the water into the homes. Um, as you can see, little rivers and creeks, people wash their clothes there, they wash their cars there, they bathe, bathe there, but the water is not necessarily clean. Some of the communities actually have a community faucet. However, um, that is even uh, uh, not a common occasion. Um, we will talk more about water when Travis uh, will speak, but um, just to let you know, in the urban area, only 80% of the people have access to running water. And then in the 113 communities, FCP, you can continue. FCP has been working on water systems for many years, but um, it, uh, yeah, it takes a long time. The biggest challenges in uh, Jalapa are deforestation, poverty, this is the inside of one of the homes, and floods. The torrential rains coming down between July and October are so strong that even sometimes break the bridges that are on the Pan American Highway and they have to be rebuilt. Um, this is in one of the communities that is for the past five years is without any communication during the re rainy season because they don't have money anymore to build a bridge. Other dangers, surprise, is actually health. Diarrhea, diabetes, hepatitis, cancer, water parasites, food parasites, livestock parasites, plant plagues, mal malaria, and dengue. And all of them actually are caused by too many pesticides um, and also then the parasites themselves that are naturally occurring in nature. Um, I, quick, going back to the development facts, just in my mind and mentioning it about the pesticides. Um, the United States uh, has been the biggest exporter of, or imp yeah, exporter of uh, pesticides that to Central and South America and this is even DDT and uh, pesticides that are not even allowed anymore by the World uh, Health Organization, but they just ship them to other countries. And so there is a lot of residue in the groundwater and everywhere. Can do. Um, FCP, uh, our Friendship City Projects, is very proud to make a difference by show by the, our form of organization. Um, the, our organization started by 14 people here in Colorado in 1984, traveling to Nicaragua, some people from the radio, some from um, some nurses, and just some engineers being interested in, what is actually going down there? We hear all this propaganda about the Contras and you know, this is a really impacted area. Let's just go down there and see what is really going on. So they went and they fell in love with the area, with the people, with that um, basically uh, resilience and open heart of the people. Um, and that's, they then initiated uh, Friendship City Project as the first sister city of Boulder. 
big difference to most other sister cities is we formed, we helped form the, um, a group that is called Pueblos Unidos, which is our sister board in Jalapa, Nicaragua. This sister board is um, an organizing committee that is, um, is formed by community leaders, leaders that come from different communities. Anybody can join, but if they join, they have to join for three years. That means during the first year, you maybe get to know what is going on. During the second year, you are more involved, and during the third year, you are becoming sort of like a mentor to new people coming in. Because everybody that joins, joins because they actually do want to have help or support for their community in some way or fashion. But as a committee from all these different communities, they decide what are the most important projects to be funded or supported by help brigades or money coming here from Friendship City projects. Um, over the, over the, uh, the years, FCP has been building um, different uh, water projects. Here is this, um, uh, like a diagram of the gravity system, uh, gravity system water project, which most of the systems that we have established are. And besides uh, establishing these water projects, we actually also did a lot of repairs or expansion of the water projects because part of Nicaragua history in, the, in 1999, Hurricane Mitch really ravaged the country. And that's when the whole situation changed for Jalapa. It used to be the breadbasket of, of Nicaragua because it has very fertile soil, lots of water and whatsoever but the hurricane swept out everything, destroyed a lot of water systems, homes. In addition to that, brought a lot of migration, migrant influx from other areas of the country. So um, during that time, then, a lot of farms and co-ops went under and the land was bought off by uh, Cuban tobacco um, plantations and uh, also other Nicaraguan, wealthy Nicaraguan investors and foreign investors for coffee plantations and tobacco. We also are very concerned about education. Um, we established at least four schools over the past years and um, uh, Sometimes they have to be updated because, for example, our, the first school that we built in Jalapa now needs a new, new roof. And all the work that we do is we are a participant in funding. We're not the only funders. We, um, requ uh, we require community involvement. We are, another thing, concern about health, access to health. There are medical brigades that are coordinated with ISLA, which is the inter, um, 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 inter-service Latin America. It's like a, it's from Minnesota, and Helping Hands USA, um, as well as uh, coordinated locally by the Jalapa Women's Foundation that we support. Um, so they're about three to four medical delegations a year. And they might be for a week or uh, for 10 days at a time. And uh, during that time is a lot of, the Women's Foundation is very interested in the cancer uh, uh, prevention and there's a lot of uh, cervical and breast cancer in Jalapa in particular, actually in, 19, uh, in 2005, a medical study that came out from the Anschutz Medical uh, University building, um, they went to Jalapa and did a study on cancers because there are 60% of the women have cancer. And actually, if you're between 19 and 25, there is even an 80% chance that you have cancer. And uh, they wanted to know, what, why is that this way? And their, all their research shows that it has to do with the toxicity of the water, the pesticides, 
and everything like that. And so, um, next. Next. Um, access to local foods. Um, since, 19, uh, since 2003, we have a program that is called Huertos, which means gardens. Um, it is a, a, a program that uh, goes into communities and teaches the communities how to establish small family gardens, but all with um, organic, uh, yeah, all organic. I mean, all the pests, I mean, the pest, plant pests are treated with organic, uh, uh, what do you say, not pesticides, but with organic fertilizers and so on. Besides being, um, besides uh, teaching uh, organic, uh, you know, how to grow organic food and uh, vermiculture, actually all the participants um, are required to nurse, these are little sacks of seedlings, to nurse um, 100 plants a year to be replanted to avoid erosion in the hillsides. So that is part of the whole program. Um, <coughs> Project FE, I'm wearing this shirt. Actually, Sophia is one of the uh, founders of Project FE, uh, which is a scholarship <coughs> fund. It's, FE stand is, means faith, but it also stands for fostering education. And it gives access to education to students that are merit students. They are good students, um, but otherwise their parents would send them to work instead of continuing school and the scholarship basically will fund transportation, school clothing, books and materials and also involves them actually in uh, community service work. Uh, on the left hand side you will see, you see some of the students also growing their seedlings and participating in the huertos and promoting some of Friendship City Project's things. Uh, reforestation e efforts then are done uh, two-prong with the family gardens that we have now in five different communities as well as Project FE. Um, the Project FE students come from many different smaller communities and um, actually our next project this year will be uh, working with the, with the birthing home of uh, Jalapa and establishing their um, uh, like a greenhouse to be a model for all the uh, garden communities um, to, to have all year round food. The con conservation efforts uh, for energy efficient stoves, um, we have supported that as well. Um, here in the middle you see a regular stove that's usually just a fire hole. I don't know if you ever had the opportunity to see that. But it's just a fire hole and people just put the wood under and the smoke is everywhere and you just, no wonder people are sick all the time. Um, but with uh, a Justa stove that has, it is insulated in here with ashes and bricks and then has a big metal um, uh, plate, you actually can heat and maintain warm several uh, pots at a time, or like the woman on the left, she is actually roasting coffee on it. Um, and then these ovens, uh, you see a traditional one versus uh, an energy efficient one that, it, that is done in a, in a barrel. Um, I have to also mention that actually Mercedes, uh, she has her own NGO in Nicaragua as well and she does solar ovens and we have connections to solar oven um, initiatives by women where women learn to build their own solar ovens and panels but the workshops are really expensive. So to fundraise that on, for something, we would love it but it's hard to do that as a small organization. Economic development is another prong of the efforts that we have been doing. We uh, supported the in, uh, initiation of a stove co-op 
uh, of two bakery co-ops from women that are without work, they have to stay at home with their kids, but they bake to earn some extra money. And um, then uh, a guitar co-op and an artisan co-op. 